Just like last time, we did all of our passive transport on the previous, like on one page. So it was all in one spot. We're gonna do all of our active transport on one page. You already know. It's active transport because it's moving things against the concentration gradient. That's, that's why it counts as active transport. Somehow we move things against the concentration gradient. You should immediately say, how? How can it do that? How can it move something against the concentration gradient? Because we saw that little diffusion simulation. We, we never, we could let that go all day. In fact, it might still be going on my computer right now. And it will never return to that original state where all the blue molecules were on one side and all the red molecules were on the other. It will, I mean, I guess there's like one in a gajillion, fernilian, bernilian possible. Maybe it could happen, but it would be very, very, very rare, and I would say, uh -uh, I don't believe you if you told me it happened. So how do we move things? How would we put them back without, if we didn't have a little button to push, how do we move things against the concentration gradient? Key here is it requires energy. Mm. And the difference between primary, active, transport, and secondary, active, transport, the difference between them is where the energy comes from. Okay. With primary active transport, Molecules are pumped against the concentration gradient using ATP as the energy source. And because I think we talked about ATP when we talked about nucleotides. So I think you've heard of ATP. Adenosine triphosphate is quite possibly the most important molecule <laughs> For cellular function, is it just us or is it all animal? I don't know who all uses ATP, but it's it's clutch. It's gold. If you have ATP, you have energy to make things happen. And primary active transport is one of the biggest uses of ATP. We pump, we get rid of stuff that we don't want that we keep producing, like well, I was about to say carbon dioxide, but that's a really bad example because that just diffuses across the cell membrane. But if there is something that we need to get rid of, we can do that using ATP and primary active transport. I, I want to say they both require energy, but do you also, like you didn't lose the fact that they also require a carrier, right? Both of them, they, you can't do any kind of active transport unless you have a carrier. So visualize those little Pac-Man dudes and now visualize, okay, this little Pac-Man dude will push things against the concentration gradient, but only in exchange for ATP. Give me a little ATP and I'll hook you up and send you through the cell membrane against your concentration gradient. Okay, I think that's all I wanna tell you. Maybe I'll tell you one more thing. Primary active transport is easier to understand than secondary active transport. Make sure you understand primary, under, pri primary active transport before you hit next. Make sure you're cool. I need ATP. I can use ATP to push molecules against their concentration gradient. Oh, this is so cool. I can use ATP to create a concentration gradient. Did you, 
Did you hear that? I have to write that down. That's really phenomenal. Primary active transport can create, maybe all of them, all active transport can create a concentration gradient. That's actually cool. I had never thought about that before. Diffusion eliminates the concentration gradient. Like if you let, whether it's facilitated or simple, it eliminates a concentration gradient. The natural move of all things is to eliminate concentration gradients. Primary and secondary active transport create concentration gradients. We actually make them and can use the, the carriers to keep them. And when I tell you what secondary active transport does, you might see like, oh, concentration gradients might come in handy.